46. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil does an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. And in fact, if you are a subscriber of his newsletter, he's going to be doing an outstanding subscriber event for all his subscribers tomorrow afternoon, May 3rd, from 4 to 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you're not a subscriber, it's very easy to be one, folks. Just come to the front of our website, the TFNN. You're going to see it right under the featured content. You're going to see the opening call subscriber event with our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. You're just going to click that. You hit subscribe, and you can get the newsletter for $149 for one month, $6.95 for six months, and $11.95 for a year. Now, what you're going to get ASAP is that you're going to get a great newsletter for a month, first off. But you're coming into the workshop for zero. OK, so the bottom line is that and if the, the newsletter works for you, folks, awesome. And most of the time it works for, for them in a big way. If for some reason it doesn't work for you on the 29th day, you can cancel the newsletter. Guess what? You have zero cost. It's a 30 day money back guarantee. You're still going to get a great newsletter for a month. You're going to understand the Chapman wave and you're going to get a great workshop from Basil uh, come tomorrow afternoon. And if you can't make it live, the way our technology works, folks, you can go 24 hours a day, all month long, and keep going over and over so you really can get to understand how Basil looks at the market. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Well, if ever there was a challenge in this particular market, this is it. Yeah, because, uh, it's a good one. And I think it's a challenge. It's a really good one, but at the same time, I think it's a challenge also for the Fed because we've spoken about this before. You've got uh, the home builders. You've got... Uh, stocks within that sector that are doing extremely well. The Fed wants lower inflation. That kind of adds to lower inflation. The yields are sort of at the higher end. That adds to inflation. So this is going to be very interesting. And, and, and the bank sector tells you things are, there's, there's a problem there. So it's a very good time for this because what I look at, I, I'm, actually, I'll do this right now. So the, the title of it is Sectors, Stocks, and the Chapman Wave Techniques to Focus on for the Coming Months. Nice. And uh, it's just, I think it's, it's a good time for this because this is exactly what we need. So I've been talking to you about, let me just get this chart right here. Just, this is typical of what I, I do. I talk about different uh, technical indicators that I've developed over the years. Now, one of the things that I look at is uh, the nine-period moving average. And now it must be... I think it's about three weeks now I've been speaking to you about this. I've been saying that, look, here on the left side is uh, of the uh, page you got. The, in the middle, middle is the weekly. On the left is the daily. On the right is the monthly chart. So I've been talking about this and saying that this nine-period moving average is a very powerful instrument that I look at. And as long as it holds over the 14-period moving average, uh, that's a really good sign and that there was a sharp pullback from the 34,008 82 high on the 14th of April, and we pull back quite quite sharply, but we held this support level. And these are the techniques I, I, I show, just a very simple from this high that was made back in March at 33,572. You can draw a trend line, and it goes right to that peak D high of the 14th of April, and it goes to two days ago where we hit 34,257. And then I do a little inside track. It's called inside track repellent zone. And look how many times the price gets repelled from that level. In fact, I like to do things live to show that this is not a one-off thing. Look, we, we just did that in the E-mini. We went right to this peak F, and we held, and we went right into this inside track repellent zone. But the green nine-period moving average is still very important. Also, I like to look for four higher peaks, peak D, and yeah, we've got a doji candle peak D in the 10-minute chart. So this is... It's a fractal of human nature. In other words, the patterns that we see in every time frame can be repeated in every time frame. So you know, you know it's amazing, Basil, yeah. too, is that on your in the nine period, inside the spy, here, I'll put this up right now. This is crazy, man. Inside the spy, the number is 4.11.37 right. to keep it, you know, and we'll go down to 407, folks, okay? But as Basil was speaking, it was trading 4.11.37. You can see... That's the, the red line if you're looking at it. And it's right there. I mean, so this is going to get interesting as to close, right? I mean, so this is, this is exactly what I was saying, that I like to do things in real time to say this is a technique that either you don't know what's going to happen next, so this is the proof of the pudding. So now what we're looking at is 
We weren't sure the s &P. I spoke to you about this yesterday. I see we've got a, an alternate count here, G slash A in the Chapman wave. You never get an H. So if there's another new high, I have to consider that's probably going to be a leg B, and that's really bullish. But look, he has that inside track. He has, this is the S&P, the repellent zone. Went to 4186.92. Little doji candle. There's always a hint to me to say if there is a turn at that particular level and it extends for a couple of bars, that could be serious. And look, he has the inside track propellant zone. It went right down to it. So using my techniques, uh, if the S&P can close, we've still got 35 or so minutes. If the S&P can close just a little higher, 4130, somewhere around 4130, that'll be another technique that I use called the Chapman Wave. In, uh, this is a Chapman Wave Roman candle. And <laughs> what happens in this is if that happens, if any time tomorrow the, for about uh, an hour, if there's a trade for an hour below 4110, there's a real good chance we're going to test the low of the day and maybe break it. So yeah, we've got Fed Day. There's a whole bunch of things going on. But most importantly, the weekly charts in both the Dow and the S&P are holding well. So these are the things that I want to demonstrate. I've got a bunch of techniques that we're going to talk about that are absolutely applicable, as I just showed you right now in the one-minute chart and the 10-minute chart of the futures and the S&P. These are relevant things. But at the same time, I'm looking at the different sectors. What sectors have had a very big move that could pull back, but are still strong. And we want to be buying those. So we raised cash in the, for subscribers to my opening call. We're anticipating this. There's going to be some volatility here in May. We want to be buyers. Uh, we're not afraid to short. We went short yesterday. We can, uh, with the stop says that uh, we should be able to, no matter what happens, we should be able to make a profit. And uh, we'll see if that holds. We, you know, the, the price has to tell us what's next. We can't tell the price what's going to happen next. But you can see that the nine period moving average is important. So in the webinar tomorrow, I'll discuss this. Here's, here's a picture of the, the Dow that I showed uh, last week. I said, yeah, look, look how the nine period moving average was so important. The Dow is the big, thick gray line. was so important back in February. And now we've gone back up. And it still hasn't crossed negative, but I'm anticipating there's a kind of an M-shaped pattern forming. And if that's correct, it'll take a few days because the, the, the height of the green moving average above the black is so big that you have to really smash to the downside to take it out. So it's a process. So that's what we're looking at. And if we, if we make new, high, new recovery highs, that's something else. But here's the S&P. Shows you the same thing. Here's that green line. Yes. the daily chart. It's held so far. It has tested the black line. So all I say is that these are techniques that are applicable. I'm going to teach them tomorrow. At the same time, I'll be going through the charts of the stocks that we have, as well as what we've been looking at. And we still long the, the Dow, the uh, UDAO. That's the three times long from October. We've got that as a core position. We'll be trading around on the upside and the downside. And so it, it's, it's going to be a fun period for May. And I think uh, some, the subscribers will have a good time tomorrow night. We'll be looking at all these different and, indexes. And, and folks, thinking. it's very easy to come into the, the webinar. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under featured content. You hit that button. You subscribe. You're going to get a great newsletter as well as an awesome webinar. Have a great one, Basil. Have a safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow and the webinar tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. you. Stay right there, folks. Come